Well, good morning to Will once again. Uh, thank you for those that are tuning in live on Facebook to this weekly uh, lecture on the New World Series, which is the 20th uh, of this uh, course, uh, which is entitled today, Yin and Yang of Life and Nature. Those that have followed my uh, posting uh, or ranting, depending on how you perceive it, uh, know that I arrogantly proclaimed that I discovered the, the greatest of new scientific theory, which is based on the twin universe. Uh, my arrogance comes uh, from the fact that I was able to quantitatively and quasi qualitatively uh, use that twin universe theory to explain all the current cosmic unknowns, such as dark energy, which uh, explains the expansion rate, accelerated expansion of the universe, dark matter, which explains the rapid rotation of galaxy, <coughs> missing antimatter, you know, why our universe don't have antimatter, predominantly all matter, even the ghostly phenomena, quantum entanglement, which uh, details how two uh, quantum particle can be separated by infinite distance, but interact instantaneously, which defies the uh, the general theory of relativity that no information should be able to travel faster than speed of light. <clears throat> but only, well, I stated only the twin universe theory. It's the current theory that can explain all those facts. Not only explain it, but make quantifiable predictions that matches. Uh, measurable experimental observations. So that's where my arrogance and confidence comes in, uh, in that the theory can not only qualitatively explain those unknowns, but can also make numeric uh, calculations which matches observation, okay? So, and of course, my twin universe led me ultimately to the discovery of a single omnipotent consciousness, which is my scientific definition of God. So it plays a very important role in my life and in the, the knowledge and truth that I am now uh, relaying to the rest of humanity. Uh, but the truth is, uh, I was not the, the first to, to know of this, quote, secret. The ancients uh, knew of this uh, philosophy, of course, they describe it in uh, not using modern science like, you know, quantum mechanics and, you know, relativity and that's kind of uh, science basis is the way I describe it. But the ancient knew about these twin universes and obviously everyone are aware of the Taoist philosophy, which is one of the most ancient uh, philosophy or religion or science or way of life, depending on how you want to describe it, uh, which is based around the yin and yang, which is obviously that our universe, that all of existence, do exist as a balance between light and dark, positive, negative. In Greek, uh, uh, the ancient Greeks, the way they describe the beginning of time before the great gods came, like Zeus, they described that the universe expanding, uh, coming to existence from a void of chaos and the seed of, uh, which is the mother Gaia, so again, this duality. So if you, if you look at all the ancient philosophies many, many thousand years ago, they all are based around this idea of a duality of existence, okay? And these are ancient societies, civilizations that are separated by thousands and thousands of miles, but yet they all are aware that our existence came about this duality. So that's why I said I, I, I bow to those ancients that knew of the, the secret that we in our modern fast age society have forgotten. And I obviously, again, arrogantly state that I have now rediscovered uh, this twin universe uh, concept, which is ultimately the yin and yang. And I obviously describe it as life and nature. Now, life in the sense that in our, even in our very DNA, our DNA, as you all know, because I've, I've posted things, are based on the four 
code of life on the DNA, on the, the DNA itself exists as a helical twist. So it exists as a pair. So the very, very essence of life itself is paired up in this duality concept, you know? And I even went as far as actually giving the, the DNA chromosomal uh, code for the cosmos itself, the very generic code of God. And even using that concept, because I'm an experimental physicist, I was able to actually calculate the number of observable baryonic particles in our universe from the actual gene code of God itself. So again, you know, and all those information, as you know, are, uh, I've said it many, many times, are in the, uh, the God book, which I published in 2018, which is also Andrea Wen, who translated into Spanish Dios, and it's also available in German. And he, she's the master scribe, and soon, hopefully, it will be available in 10 languages of the world. So like the Bible Tower, the rest of the world will know the, this great knowledge and this great truth to come in all the mother tongues, or majority of the mother tongues. So the life itself is actually built on this duality concept and nature as well. In, in all of nature, you know, you have the light and the dark, you have positive, you have negative. Now there, there are some would say, well, wait a minute, there is a nature of force. Uh, gravity and time are unidirectional. And those are, related to the laws of entropy, which is a very complex subject matter, which uh, I'll cover, I've covered before and I'll cover again future lecture. Uh, but even those phenomena based on the duality of the twin universe are actually symmetric. So because in our positive universe, gravity is positive, time moves forward. In the negative universe, gravity is repulsive which explains the expansion rate of the universe, which you can calculate exactly, that matches observation. And time also goes backwards, you know. But the main premise of why I'm describing this under the new world series, so okay, what's this gonna to relate to a new world? Well, the, the aspects of it, which I think is very relevant now, is the battle between what people perceive between good and evil, okay? That's the, the ultimate uh, duality of uh, life itself, I guess. Of, uh, but I don't like to describe it as good and evil because as in the, the yin and yang philosophy, you need both the right side, the left side, the male side, the female side. You need both to be harmoniously balanced for life and nature to exist in a cell. Therefore, you may then logically explain, well, if that's the case, then evil must always have to exist because if you're saying you've got to have this balance, that's why I don't like using the word good and evil. The way I like to describe it more as balance and unbalance. So the balance has the yin and yang, the, the light and the dark contained within, whereas the imbalance, has either too much light or too much dark, too much positive, too much negative. And that is the two separation. So to me, those that are righteous and good have a balanced nature, has both equal amount of light and dark. Those that are totally imbalanced, either have one or too much, are the ones that does commit the evil. So that's how I define the duality of good and evil. It's not that we need evil. No, we absolutely do not need evil. We do not need racist dumbasses in this world. Absolutely not. If this world <clears throat> could be <clears throat> sapped away with just wise people and all the racist dumbasses of this world were banished uh, or educated, I mean, that's the way ultimately we will eliminate racist dumbasses by educating to a, a high enough level that they realize just how dumbass they are to be racist. And when they get to that level, then they will reach the ultimate balance of their yin and yang. Therefore, they will retain 
the duality. So, so that to me is the most important gift that I'm trying to deliver today is that we do not need evil to have a balance with good. No, absolutely not. We need, we can just have evil because, no, just have good, sorry. My apology for that slip of the tongue maybe, but we, we can sustain our existence by having a balance of light and dark, of male and female. And that in itself will produce goodness, which will allow humanity to evolve and ultimately explore the outer stars and the inner spirit. Because if we remain fractured, we remain out of balance, then evil will dominate. But evil only have one path, and that is the path of extinction, because evil leads to conflict, leads to destruction, leads to killing, leads to raping, leads to looting, leads to all the evilness uh, of, of regrettably of humanity that has existed for thousands of years. But again, I'm optimistic. I believe through education, we can bring humanity into balance, okay? Wisdom ultimately is the cure for all of humanity ill. That is my genuine hope. And that is my genuine optimism that we can do it together. Together, we must do it collectively. Okay, so that is why I wanted to cover the philosophy of yin and yang today and how it relates to why we can sustain humanity based on just good and eliminating evil. These are not the duality. The duality is the balance of good that good bring. Evil is unbalanced. So evil is the, the, the breakage of this duality, okay? We must re retain, go back to that the ancient knew about that our existence on our wealth, our mental wellness, our physical wellness, our soulful wellness will only be enlightened and achieved when we reach that point of duality, okay? So God bless you all. And tomorrow I will uh, pray for humanity. Thank you.